Let's discuss the mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity. Recall that there are four main types of hypersensitivity. This video discusses type 2 hypersensitivity. This results when the body's immune system targets tissue-specific antigens to cause damage or dysfunction. In each case, a type 2 reaction involves a target cell, an antigen expressed on its surface, and the antibodies that bind to these antigens. Antibody-antigen binding activates certain mechanisms that ultimately damage the target cell. There are three main mechanisms involved in a type 2 reaction. The first is antibody and complement mediated destruction. Second, antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity or ADCC. And third, target cell dysfunction. The first mechanism of type 2 hypersensitivity can occur in two ways. The first involves the formation of a membrane attack complex, or MAC. A target cell expresses antigens that an antibody will come and bind to. Upon binding, the antibody will activate the classical pathway of the complement system. The classical pathway causes the activation and cleavage of several proteins, specifically the complement protein C1, which leads to the activation and cleavage of complement C3 into C3A and C3B. C3B then activates other proteins, which leads to the formation of a membrane attack complex involving C9 proteins. The membrane attack complex then induces lysis of the target cell. The second way antibody and complement mediated destruction is accomplished involves opsonization. Antibodies and the complement protein C3B attach to the target cell and act as opsonins, meaning they attract macrophages to come and phagocytose the target cell. Type 2 reactions that involve this mechanism include autoimmune hemolytic anemia, mismatched transfused blood cells, erythroblastosis fetalis, and good pasture syndrome. The second mechanism, known as ADCC, involves antibodies that bind to antigens on target cells that are then recognized by immune cells like macrophages, natural killer cells or NK cells, eosinophils, and neutrophils using FC receptors. Once bound to an antibody, these cells can release toxic substances or granules onto the target cell, causing it to die. ADCC is involved when certain medications act as haptins and bind to cells of a certain tissue. When antibodies bind to these body cells, they can activate complement proteins C5A and C3A, which attract white blood cells to the site and carry out ADCC. Examples of ADCC include medication-induced hemolytic anemia, medication-induced thrombocytopenia, and medication-induced neutropenia, where the body's own immune system is destroying red cells, platelets, and neutrophils after medication treatment. ADCC also occurs with transplant rejection, immune reactions against parasites, and immune reactions against neoplasms. The third mechanism of type 2 reactions is known as target cell dysfunction. You may be familiar with a condition known as Graves' disease. This is an autoimmune condition that involves the follicular cells of the thyroid gland. These cells have receptors for thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. Under normal condition, TSH binds to its receptor, 
and promotes the production of the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. Graves' disease results when the body mistakenly produces autoantibodies called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, or TSI, that bind to TSH receptors and activate them to cause an increase in the production of T3 and T4. TSI, however, is not subject to negative feedback, so TSI causes the thyroid gland to continually produce thyroid hormones, resulting in hyperthyroidism. Myasthenia gravis is another instance of target cell dysfunction. Autoimmune antibodies may also be produced that cause problems at the neuromuscular junctions. The antibodies either block or destroy acetylcholine receptors. These actions limit communication between the neuron and skeletal muscles, and patients usually present with muscle weakness, often initially manifesting as droopy eyelids. Another clinically relevant, relevant example of antibodies causing target cell dysfunction is pernicious anemia. Intrinsic factor produced by parietal cells is required for vitamin B12 absorption in the ileum. Vitamin B12 is necessary for DNA synthesis and therefore production of red blood cells. Antibodies against gastric parietal cells and intrinsic factor can both be detected in the blood of patients with pernicious anemia. Antiparietal cell antibodies target the hydrogen potassium pumps on parietal cells. The intrinsic factor antibodies block intrinsic factor from binding to vitamin B12. or prevent vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex from binding to its receptor in the ileum. This results in decreased absorption of, of vitamin B12 and compromises the body's ability to make red blood cells, resulting in anemia. Here now is a summary of the three main mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity. Now for some questions for review. Pause the video now and think of your answers. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.